Welcome back to Metal Magic. Today we're going to talk about installing nut plates. In metal aircraft, it's very, very common to need to have a nut of some sort installed behind a part in an invisible place, an unreachable place, so that when you attach something else to the aircraft, a, an access panel, a floor panel, there's a nut that you can go into. And we do that with something called a nut plate. It's basically a, a steel threaded piece with holes for rivets to attach it on the back side of the, of the structure. In order to attach it, we have a multi-step process. So let's see if we can walk you through that. I've got a, a piece here that represents a flange, something on a rib. And the first thing we do, you're going to need a nut plate template. First thing we have to do is drill the center hole up to a number 10 because that's what it needs. So we're going to start with a number 10 drill, put it into our drill motor. I've got a pilot hole here already drilled, and we're going to go ahead and drill that hole. And we'll give that a quick deburring, just so it's, we're comfortable with it. Okay, that's good. And now we can take our template, which is going to allow us to drill two holes. We're going to drill the first hole with this right side up, put the center piece in, line it up so that we're perpendicular right along our line, and we're going to take that number 40 drill, drill through. Now we flip the template because the template has a little pin which is going to sit in that hole that we just drilled and it's going to go into the, the center hole. And now we're nice and firm and we can drill through the bushing for the other one. And now we have the place where we want to install our nut plate. We're going to take that out of the vise and deburr it and then we'll proceed. Now, we're ready to proceed, but I should mention that nut plate templates come in different sizes because well, although we kind of have a standard nut plate, and this is a number eight nut plate with standard legs, you're going to find that there are miniature nut plates with closer legs. You're going to find that there are right angle nut plates with the legs at 90 degrees to each other. There are all sorts of nut plate templates. So you can probably get by with this number eight template most of the time, but occasionally you're going to get frustrated because you need something else. And then you might just use the nut plate itself as a template. That works fairly well as well. Now, since we're installing this on a surface that's going to have something else bolted on top, screwed on top, we want to have this flush. So we're going to have to use flush screws and there are a couple ways to do that. This is fairly thin metal so it's kind of hard to get a really accurate uh, countersinking. You can't dimple it because if you dimple it it won't sit into the nut, the nut plate won't sit on it properly. So in this particular case since the nut plate is non-structural you can get away with a little hand countersinking to make a little notch for that For that rivet, we're going to use uh, flush AN3 rivets to mount this. And you just kind of do this, practice it a few times on scraps so that you kind of know what size you're going to use. Then you're going to need a silver Clico. To put in one leg of the nut plate, line it up so that it looks about right. So you've got a hole through there. And then we're going to take the appropriate length rivet, which I've kind of pre-measured here as a 3.5. And I think I could dimple, I could countersink that just a little bit deeper, looking at it. Make a nice place for it to sit. Okay. And then we're going to take our pneumatic squeezer that's been set in advance. We're going to have to lift this out of the vise and we'll go ahead and squeeze that and bingo we've got the first rivet set now we can take the Clico out 
I remembered we needed to countersink that a little bit more. Take our rivet, check our work. It's nice and flush. Yeah, we'll do it this way. And you want to make sure that you don't hit the center of the nut plate when you're doing this. So you might have to be slightly off center on your squeezer dies. And bingo, we have a nut plate. Now, if you're going to do this on a thick piece of metal, which is very, very common, again, well, let me just put this in the vise so that it's easy to work with. We're going to essentially do the exact same process. Um, and we're just going to use a countersink when we're ready to do that. So we start by drilling a number 10 hole. <clears throat> use our template. Drill the first hole. Pop it around. Drill the second hole. Okay. So now we have our perfectly matched holes for the nut plates. And we'll go ahead and countersink that with a, an official countersink. That looks about right. We're going to deburr the back side. I'm doing this backwards just because it'll always be a little difficult in the airplane anyways. This is a good place for a blind deburring tool that goes through the holes and allows you to get the back side. So we're going to put this nut plate on like we did with a Clico. Then we're going to find the appropriate length rivet, push it through the hole. There we go. Now, since I was last squeezing on a very thin piece of metal, I need to open this up quite a bit. Make sure that we get it right. Bomb. And we squeeze it just fine. The Clico out. Put in the rivet. And again, make sure that you might have to squeeze off center a little bit so you don't hit the center part of the nut plate. That's it. That's nut plate installation. Uh, you'll probably do quite a few hundred of them on a typical RV. Uh, there are airplanes that don't use nut plates. They tend to use Tinnerman nuts. You can put nut plates in if you want to have something that's a little bit more uh, permanent or that doesn't, uh, doesn't wear out like they do with a, with a PK machine or PK screw. Thanks again to Aircraft Spruce for sponsoring the series and thanks for watching.